Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. My name is Derek, for those of you who don't know. And today I have for you just a little mm, tip, if you want to call it that. Um, the difference between a porcelain palette and a plastic. And a plastic palette. Now, aside from porcelain being a sturdier material than plastic, like, I don't know if you can hear that or not. Take it off. Listen to this. You can definitely hear it. You can hear that ring. Hear that kind of pitchy hollowness in there. And then plastic. Just dull. Porcelain is a nice heavy material. Stays put where you want it when you're placing it down. Doesn't move around while it's in use. Those are good things if you ask me, but the biggest difference, in my opinion, to plastic and porcelain is this problem. I just washed this about 20 minutes ago, and as you can see, it's very stained. Like the mixing areas are stained, the wells are all stained, and I don't know if there's a way you can even get the stains out of plastic. If there is, you can pretty well keep that to yourself because I'm never going to use another plastic palette again as long as I have the porcelain one. Because it's just a lot better. I promise. It really is. Um, I mean, but you don't have to use a porcelain palette. You can use plastic. It'll do just fine. It's going to allow you to mix your paints and, you know, Mix whatever color you want and apply it to your paper and you're, you're good to go. Paint, right? But also, one of the things about a plastic palette is that when you mix your colors on a plastic palette, especially a brand new one, particularly a brand new one, they beat up and separate. They don't stay in a little, you know, in a puddle on the plastic. Until after the plastic gets some wear to it and then they'll start to kind of stay where you put it, but... They don't really do that right from the start, but they do with a porcelain palette. You mix paint on it and it stays right there in a puddle where you put the paint. I think that's rather convenient. Especially if you mix a lot of color, you know? But they don't, they don't stain when you clean them. Let's see if I can't find some clean paper towel here. I know I had some. Yeah, I know, right there. That's the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that they don't stain when you, after you clean them. They, they, take this little spot right here. Okay. Clean water. Quick wipe. See that? Dry. Right in there. No staining. None. Now maybe there are some colors out there, probably a phthalo or something like that, that will, will stain a porcelain palette. And maybe, depending on the quality of the porcelain that the palette is made from, they might stain if there's some pitting or stuff in there. I don't know. But, for the most part, they do not stain. I think that's a huge benefit. That means your colors are gonna, the colors that you're mixing are going to register correctly against the palette that you're mixing them on. You might have that issue with a plastic palette it being all stained up. The color you're mixing is going to register a little bit differently on that plastic palette above, you know, with that stain on there. Because it's going to read differently. The light's going to come through the color you're mixing a little bit differently because of the color of the stain on your plastic. And you're going to perceive it, your eye is going to perceive it a little bit differently. Will it be anything super drastic? Probably not, depending on how bad the stain is. But... It is enough. It, it's enough that it can affect the color that you're putting on your painting. And you don't want that. Or at least I don't want that. Maybe you do. If that's the thing you're going for, cool. Have at it. You know, do, do your thing. But also, I really love these little, little porcelain mixing vessels. You know, these are great. 
because they're just right there in your hand and if you're painting on details with a little tiny thin you know little tiny brush with just little tiny bristles on it or like if something like a more traditional uh rigger brush i mean that's not quite a rigger but you get what i mean right they don't hold a lot of paint because there's not a whole lot of bristles there okay so like you can get in here you're mixing your colors you got a little bit of paint on your brush and you go to your painting you apply it it looks great all right there in hand there's not a long way to go you can keep a good significant amount of color in there get yourself a few of these little mixing vessels uh, i can't remember who makes these somewhere in japan i don't remember the name of the manufacturer but maybe you can see that sticker call pause the video it's probably too blurry if i can remember though i will try to leave a link to those two little uh mixing vessels and the tom lynch porcelain palette in the video description down below um oh hey here's another good one I don't know if many of you have heard of these or not, but this is one of my absolute favorite brushes, even over around the dagger. This bad boy can give you thick lines, can give you thin lines, nice and wispy, can give you just the variety of marks you can make with this particular, with a dagger brush versus say a round or a flat or a bright in my opinion are significantly greater than you would get from either of those other brushes just an opinion i know you have your preference it's okay it's a good brush too i really think you'll like i uh i can't afford quality brushes right now it kind of sucks so this is just a cheapy master's touch brush that you can get from that big you know, um, art supply store. I know some of you know who Master's Touch is, okay? I know I don't have to tell you that. Their colors are similar to the shirt that I'm wearing. No, it's not Nike. Although that would be kind of cool if Nike supplied paint products. I don't know, maybe. Maybe, no? No? Okay. But, they, they, really, um, paper, if you can get, if you can afford a high quality paper like Arches or something like that on a block, go for it because a block helps keep your paper from warping. Like, because your thinner, lightweight papers, even when they're taped down or pre stretched, they're going to warp. They don't really handle a lot of water, like, you know, 145 pound um, paper will. It'll warp on you really bad. Even when, even if it's taped down or pre-stretched, it, it's going to buckle and warp. On a block, it is far less likely to do that. 300-pound paper on a block, far less likely to buckle and warp on you. They can handle a lot of water, much more than you might think. Um, but it, it, it's worth it if you can afford it. If not, don't worry about it. You can start wherever. It doesn't really matter. You can start with low-quality wood pulp paper. That's fine. It gives you something to paint on. It gives you something to do experiment with. You don't have to have a porcelain palette. You can use a plastic palette. That's fine, too. You don't have to have expensive brushes. You don't have to have expensive anything to paint in watercolor. You don't have to have expensive paints, either. Does all of that stuff help? Yes, of course it does. Quality will always be better than the lower, you know, the cheaper stuff. But it is a place to start. So, if you don't have a lot of money, it's fine. You can get yourself the student grade paints. You can get yourself low quality, lower um, grade paints, whatever. And they will work. They will do the job that you want them to do. Maybe not in the way that you want them to do it, but you learn that as you go. It's fine. A little spritzer bottle for some different effects. I need a different one. This one is a little too fine of a mist. Versus, like, you know, fat drops. I like the fat drops. Um, paper towels. I mean, yeah. That's about it.
Anyway, uh, again, if you've got any like comments or tips or whatever for how to get the stains out of a plastic pallet, feel free to keep them to yourselves. I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm not going to use that one again. But yeah, y'all have a great day. Peace.